What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Trends Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I'm going to show you how I made this beautiful, delicious, smoky, barky, porky, tender, amazing smoked pulled pork pork butt on my reverse flow smoker. Coming up. This is some pork. Pat it dry. And what we got here is just your classic bone-in pork butt, Boston butt. Pretty good size, really nice heavy fat cap on there, which is definitely what I'm looking for. A lot of nice marbling in there. Beautiful little money muscle on the end. And this is a perfect cut for a beginner cook or if you're new to a smoker, because it's a super forgiving cook. And I know I already cooked some baby backs on that pit last week, which is a great place to start as well because it's a much shorter cook. You go through less wood. Ribs cook great hot and fast and low and slow. But when it comes to the longer cooks like a pork butt, brisket, beef ribs, the pork butt is always a great place to start because it gives you plenty of time to really dial in your fire management and kind of understand how the cooker works, work on temp swings and predicting how the fire box is working and all that good stuff. And unlike beef ribs or brisket, we're not really going for presentation with a pork butt because it's all going to get shredded up at the end anyway. But I think it's time to get some seasoning on this thing, which today is going to be some good old fashioned chud rub. I really do like just salt and pepper on a pork butt, it really gets that nice briskety bark, but you know, pork really takes you well to different flavors and this is just a little bit Bit more savory and add some great color as opposed to just salt and pepper although it is primarily just salt and pepper and it's a big piece of meat so we can go on with a whole bunch of rub pretty much as much as it can take and as you notice i didn't do any trimming i do not think it's necessary to do any trimming when it comes to a pork butt all that fat is going to render down nicely and if it doesn't we can always pull it out when we're shredding this up at the end of the day so i'm just going to go all around all sides because you know you definitely don't want to forget the sides flip it over and hit that fat cap as well Gotta say, I'm pretty excited. I haven't cooked a classic pork butt for pulled pork in probably about a year since last summer. Always fun to get back to these basic cooks. Get all this table rub. And per usual, I didn't use a slather. Don't really seem to be having any problems with this rub sticking, but that is looking pretty much perfect to me. Let's fire up the pit. And on the pit we go. We're gonna go right about nyon. We're gonna aim the flat side of the bone towards the fire, fat cap up. And this seems to be the sweet spot of this reverse flow smoker, because any farther this way, we're gonna start dealing with that radiant heat from the deflector plate. We could go farther back and get some more smoke on it, but I kinda wanna be right in the middle so we get a nice even bark on this thing. And if I learned anything from my previous baby back rib cook, is that this reverse flow seems to cook a little bit on the hotter side. So we're probably gonna aim for around 250, 275 for the first little bit and we'll check back in. So we're a couple hours into this fire holding at 250 but looks like it's on its way down. Pork butt looking beautiful. I think it's time to throw a log on. Ooh. As you can see our logs are starting to break down so I'm gonna get my old pole here and just kind of help them turn into charcoal a little bit. Spread them out. This back log still got some integrity to it. That going horizontal. I like to create a little channel in the middle. That's kind of what the V is for. That way we put some more logs on. There's some good airflow underneath. And then on we go with another log. Beautiful. That log's a little short. So we'll probably prop it up just like that. And that should catch beautifully. And there we go, burning nice and clean. Beautiful. So we're about five hours into this pork butt cook and uh, yeah, I got it on a little later in the day than I probably should have, but let's check in on it. Ooh, looking nice and barky. You can hear all the sizzling on this bottom plate because uh, I got a little hungry. So I decided to throw some more stuff on here. You know, if you got a big pit, you might as well fill it up. Couple of links in the back, got some crispy skin, chicken thighs up front and a whole bunch of jalapeno poppers, kids. Pfft, why not? Nice looking bark on this guy so far. Rocking about 165. Let's check the bottom, that'll be interesting. I'm about 165 on bottom too, so it seems to be cooking pretty evenly. Happy with that. Also, Thermoworks. Why do I have to put my own magnet on these things? Come on. So make it a little snacky poo. We'll probably let this cook for another little bit and then give this thing the old wrap. Not mad about a spread like that, folks. I mean, whoo, looking beautiful. Chud rub for the win. Although I gotta say, this is the first true downside of this pit. All the cream cheese that leaked out of these poppers, moved it back here at the end, uh, has leaked through and is now just kind of burning onto that bottom plate, which is not ideal. I did pitch this thing up a little bit in the back to promote grease going down and into the grease tray. And it's filling up, so I know it's working, but I also have noticed just now that uh, there is a weld pocket missing and yeah, we're leaking on the ground. 
around. So probably next time I fire this thing up, I gotta fix that because that's not good. But that does let you know that the grease is moving off the plate. Oh, goodness gracious. But it'll be interesting to see if all this grease kind of cooking onto the plate will affect the flavor at all. But that butt is looking nice. Oh God, that's so hot. Oh God. Oh, we're about six and a half hours into this pork butt cook, and this thing is looking nice and barky. Oh, would you just look at it? Fat cap is split, really great render on there. You can just see how juicy that is. Love it. Rocking about 180 internal, so now I'm gonna wrap this up and give it the old trusty foil boat. Beautiful. Now back on the pit this goes until probing tender. And just like that, after about eight hours, this thing is coming off the pit, probing like butter, feeling nice and tender. Looking beautiful, I might add. Nice and barky. Oh God, I just want to dive in right now. But uh, to be honest, it's like 10, 11 o'clock at night and uh, I'm kind of sleepy. So what I'm going to do now is pop this into my warmer overnight at 150 degrees, which is not something I usually do for pulled pork, but I don't think it's going to hurt. And then tomorrow we'll probably head to the chud shop and have some lunch with bones so i will see y'all then one overnight rest later we have made it to the chud shop got rid of a few pits this weekend so got a lot more space in here pretty excited about that and over on the big chud table we've got this beautiful barky little foil boat pork butt and i've got the same toaster oven here pretty nice fits a pork butt and a brisket perfectly but i think it's time to dive into this thing and see how it came out gotta say smelling nice what am i gonna pull this in might as well use this pan I already got a little green on there. Oh yeah, that's feeling tender. Oops. Oh no. Don't mind if I do. Looking extra black and shiny. Looking so barky. Oh, just look at that bark glistening away. Ooh, I'm ready. All right, first things first. Let's see if this bone comes out. Yeah, nice and clean. Good sign. And now the best part. Oh. Oh, that's just beautiful. Woo, just a little toasty. I do not know if this pan is big enough, folks, but we will find out. Yeah, this is looking beautiful. Not mush, still got some good grain structure to it, but impossibly tender. And that bark, gotta get that all mixed in there nice, nice. I'm telling you, if you're not getting this briskety bark on your pork butts, you're missing out on a world of flavor. Mm. Ooh, so smoky. Ow. Just gonna shred this up. I'm paying close attention to the bottom too, which is this side right here. And uh, it's perfect. You know, I was worried about that bottom heat from the baffle plate and the reverse flow, but yeah, everything's feeling great. Nice and soft, nice and tender, smelling nice and smoky. Yeah, I think I'm gonna need a bigger tray. That's a little better. Oops again. Yeah, there's a good look at that underside. Perfect. Pretty impressed so far, folks. Hey, Bones. Look, buddy, a big pile of pulled pork. Yeah, and I definitely don't want to overmix this. Don't want it to be too mushy, but just like this, pulled apart, little chunks is pretty much exactly what we're looking for. Make sure that bark is evenly dispersed, but yeah. Let's give this a little taste test, shall we? Mm, that is so good. I mean, that's good by itself. It doesn't even really need a sauce, but of course we're gonna add a little bit of something, something just for some more flavor. We're gonna go classic pork sauce today with just some good old fashioned Texas Pete, as much or as little as you see fit as well as a little splash of some apple cider vinegar. Just a little bit of heat, a little bit of that nice vinegar tanginess, and just get that all mixed in. Oh, there we go. Now it's smelling like some pulled pork. This is kind of a Carolina style sauce, but you could always do some sweeter, you know, ketchup based molasses sauces too, if that's your style. And basically just keep tasting it until it's tasting the way you want it to taste. Mm. So good. And there we go, looking beautiful. I ended up adding about that much of a bottle of Texas pea, and this is tasting exactly where I like it. But you can always add more rub or salt or whatever you need until it tastes the way you like it. Next up, I'm gonna bust out a super lazy coleslaw using some coleslaw mix. That's right, folks. Really just kind of dialing it in today. You know, chop sequences are fun and all, but sometimes you just gotta feel a little lazy. And for our coleslaw dressing, I'm gonna go into some. Cupy mayonnaise, just a little bit. Yeah, might as well throw a little Texas Pete in there too, right? It's all about building those layers of flavor. Also going with a pinch of sugar and a little bit of chud rub. Why not? And just get that all nice and mixed up. Mmm, honestly, not bad. Slightly toasted bun, a beautiful mound of our smoky, barky pulled pork, and top that with just a little bit of slaw. Not too many vegetables, folks. You know the drill. And there we go, a beautiful little pulled pork sando. Beautiful. Must say, folks, it's been a long time since I made a classic pulled pork sandwich on the offset, or on the reverse flow in this case, and I'm pretty excited to dive on into this. Mm -hmm. Nice and tender, nice and fatty. Mm. Great smoke, great fat render. I mean, honestly, that reverse flow. This tastes just like it would off my offset. Love it. So it's an easy, fun cook, too. 
Mm -hmm. Phenomenal sandwich. Where's Team Chud? All right, Team Chud, introducing Rachel, say hi. Howdy. She's the newest <laughs> member of Team Chud, helping out behind the scenes, mostly helping this guy with all your questions and paperwork and- A lot of questions. All that stuff. Doing the paperwork. heavy lifting. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, would you like some pulled pork sandwiches? Yeah, this absolutely. Is, this is the first long cook on the new reverse flow smoker, so let me know yeah. how it compares to the normal pork. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Clinkies. I love pulled pork. Mm -hmm. You and me both. That's delicious. Mm. I made that slaw a little too tangy, I think, but other than that. I was going to say it could use more tang. Really? My bag just got a light bite. I don't think too tangy. It's like all the same consistency, except for a little bit of cabbage and carrots. Mm -hmm. So good. Mm. 10 out of 10. How many could you eat in one sitting? <laughs> I put the groceries away. <laughs> That's why I'm on a diet right now. <laughs> this is probably bad for business. I'm on a diet unless I'm on camera. <laughs> and then I eat the worst food possible. Yeah. Mm. Well, there's now going to be a mounted pork at the chud shop for years to come. You're going to leave it in the fridge like you did that pulled chicken? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's there for like two weeks. It's still there. <laughs> oh, gross. <laughs> I got to say, all in all, that was a really pleasant cook. That reverse flow is starting to grow on me a little bit. You know, it held temps really well. Fire management was super easy. Fat render was there. The bark was there. Smokiness is right there. And it obviously helps that we had that butt right in the sweet spot the whole time where the radiant heat from that deflector plate or the firebox wouldn't really affect the bottom too much. Much. I think if we were cooking in more volume, if we had like six or ten pork butts on there, we might have some issues with the bottom crisping up too much, but all in all, I think that thing has got some potential. It makes for a great pulled pork sandwich. But with this last bite, I think we all know what time it is. It's time for the official taste test. <laughs> all right, y'all, and that is it. That is how to make a super simple, very easy, Texas barky style pulled pork on the brand new Reverse Flow Smoker. I gotta say, if you haven't made a classic pulled pork sandwich like this in a while, I highly recommend it. So simple, yet so good. And, you know, Reverse Flow seems to be working great so far, but the only way we can really tell is if we throw a brisket on it. But all that being said, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button that YouTube know by dropping a like on this video. If you give this recipe a try for yourself, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Chud's Barbecue. I love to see what y'all are cooking. Big shout out to all the Patreon members. Thank you for supporting Team Chud and allow me to keep making all these videos. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace.